What I say to people is, are you willing to do anything and everything it takes to get where you want to go, providing it's legal, moral, and ethical? And I think that's a key. If you're willing to do whatever it takes to get where you want to go, you'll get there. Most people are not prepared. They are comfortable. And so they get up out of the easy chair and they have a fantastic idea and they've talked about it and strategized about it, maybe even written it down. And they come up to what we call the terror barrier. That thing that looks like it's impenetrable, something you can't get over through or around. Starting, that's the key. Welcome to the Thriving After Divorce Podcast, where you learn the secrets to reclaim your life and turn your breakup into your breakthrough. Transformation expert, internationally published author, and online show host Tanya Marie Dubé will help you quickly pick up and move on as you tune into interviews with some pretty cool experts from around the world, showing you how to live your best life after divorce. If you're ready to learn the skills to finally put your divorce behind you for good, dig down really deep and step into your highest self, then you're in the right place. Here's your host, online educator and mom of two, Tanya Marie Dubé. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Thriving After Divorce Radio Podcast. So for nearly two and a half decades, my friend Sean Shuchuk has shared his message of change as an international speaker and also through his first best-selling book, Change Your Mind, Change Your Results. He was featured in the movie The One Minute Success System with Brian Tracy. He also produced a second full-length production called Game Changer. With a successful track record of delivering results to over 8,000 clients, over 2,000 media appearances, and numerous accolades, Sean is considered the go-to for those entrepreneurs, executives, and high achievers that are driven to achieve more in collapsed timeframes. We do get into conversations about his divorce. He's gone through all of it and wants to share most of that with us in this episode. So we also talk about what it means to focus on where your life is going in order to achieve freedom, how perception is not reality, and how life is about learning and your experiences are your tuition. So please stick around to the end. Sean has an amazing gift for all of you who are showing up today. Thank you again for listening and let's welcome Sean. Hi, Sean. I'm so happy to have you here today. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Oh, I'm so, 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 so happy to have you here. Um, All right. So let's just jump right in. You ready? I am. I wanted to begin with who you serve and what led you to this path. That's uh, a loaded couple of questions. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So listen, at the end of the day, uh, many, many years ago, I decided I was never going to be an entrepreneur. And uh, after high school, uh, I moved small town to big city and, and got myself a job and very quickly realized that I was highly unemployable. And I hated to admit it at that point in time to myself, at least, that I really wanted the freedom that being an entrepreneur gives or allows. And uh, I decided I was going to try and I did. So I work a lot with high achievers and entrepreneurs. You don't have to be an entrepreneur to work with me, but I work a lot with people who really are focused on where they want their life to go, not just a status quo or more of the same. More of the same gives you more of the same. Mm -hmm. So really what I focus on is working with people who want to achieve freedom in my world. Freedom is defined as the ability to do what you want, when you want, and with who you want. Mm -hmm. Does that does that kind of fit? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so that's awesome. You're you're known as a results coach, right? You're like, yes. Is that is that a good title for you? I'm branded as the number one results coach. Absolutely, Uh, love it. Okay, so now, what has led you down this path? Why why did you deserve, or why did you think that you wanted to teach specifically with these kinds of people? Well, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've started, run, and profited from 40, uh, as of July, 44 companies over the course of the last 25 or 26 years. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, this, the idea was never to be in coaching. As a matter of fact, when I first started doing some of this stuff, coaching wasn't even a term that was associated with this. I started working with small business people many, many years ago out of pure necessity, more than anything else. And I had way back at 13 years old, this will date me, of course, I was reading a magazine. There was an ad in the back of the magazine that said something to the effect of help small businesses grow and improve. And I read this, asked my parents to write a check. The book came. I read it, I don't know, three or four times cover to cover. Hmm. But I grew up rural. I grew up, you know, who are you going to consult with? The cattle down the lane? Like, you know, it just wasn't (laughs) feasible. Um, But that's a reality. And at 20, 20 years old, I started knocking on doors and working with small businesses. And don't kid yourself. I mean, it wasn't an easy trip because when you're a kid, um, you know, I, I very, very vividly remember being physically removed from a business by the business owner. You know, what, what the hell do you know? 
So, uh, but it's been a long journey. Um, I love, um, it, it drives me, it motivates me. It's what gets me out of bed in the morning is watching people achieve what they've set out to. If their idea, their goal, their objective, their destination is to achieve freedom, it's about what I do is about collapsing time frames. Um, in other words, getting them there faster and coaching is a holistic process. It's not just about one thing. It's not just about business or marketing or mindset. It's all of those, but it's about walking hand in hand and side by side with somebody to avoid potholes mm. and time frames. That's amazing. I, I love that. That's awesome. Um, now you're known, I mean, this is how I know you as a number one results coach in the country. So to get to this place and thinking, not only does it take a lot of hard work and, you know, determination and tenacity and all of that, but you must have gone through some life-changing things to get you in front of these kinds of people. Did you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, sure. I don't know where to start because I don't know that we have all day, but uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, you know, what? maybe I'm a little slow on the uptake. I'm not sure, but there have been definitely some changes, whether it's from a relationship standpoint, um, you know, whether it's from a, uh, you know, if we go back 13 or 14 years ago, my dad was killed in a hit and run accident. I mean, that was definitely a wake up call for me. Oh, wow. And I'm sorry in, about that. Thank you for that. In 2007, um, you know, the doctor stood three feet for me and said, Sean, I think you have cancer. And thank God it wasn't. But I'll tell you mm -hmm. this, I walked outside of that doctor's office and started making phone calls to sell the three companies that I was operating at the time. Wow. Wow. That must have shook your entire world. Well, yeah, you know, when you, you're 30, early 30s, and you know, you have a doctor that says it, that to you. I mean, it's certainly it is a wake up call. Mm, that's fascinating. Um, so then after that, well, when you learn that you didn't have cancer, and you got to keep your three companies, uh, what was the road for you? Like, I did, after exactly. that? Uh, I, I did sell between May, that was in May of 2007. Between May and August, I sold all three companies. Mm. And I have a home and an acreage in the interior of British Columbian wine country. And uh, I went and spent uh, eight or nine months there and, uh, and literally read a thousand books. Didn't do very much of anything other than that. Wow. Okay. All right. I see. I'm starting to piece it all together here. And, mm -hmm. then, and then from that, you, so now you've armed yourself with tons of knowledge and you were just like, this is it. This is the career for me. I'm going to go in this path. Uh, you know, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I've always, I've always done the advisory, the consulting, and I've run every, everything from a coffee shop to property management uh, to a legal company. I mean, I own the largest eviction company in the province of Alberta at one point in time. Um, so, I mean, I've done a lot of different things. I've done a lot of, I guess, eclectic is probably the best way to describe it, but uh, I've done a lot of different things, all business related and very much uh, working with people. And I think that's a key. I love watching people uh, achieve. And, you know, I'll, I'll coin what uh, Les Brown says, greatness, because I think every, it was always intended that everybody live a life of, of abundance. I just think most of us give up on it. And coaching is at some level helping folks excavate that potential very deep within them. Oh, wow. I absolutely love that. I read a book uh, probably last year and it talked heavily about this stuff. I'm not a religious person by any stretch of the imagination, but one of the business books someone recommended to me was called Business Secrets of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And it just goes through how many times the Bible talks about having a business, but the foundation of that, which, you know, wh while we're talking about this makes me think of you, is the importance of building relationships. Listen, relationships is what it all comes down to. We do one, we do a lot of events, but we do one major event a year called Influence Live. And every year it happens in the U.S., uh, and this year is no exception. And what we're focused on is working with people. Everybody is in business or wants to be in business, has to understand that a business is a sales organization. If you aren't selling, you're not going to be in business. Mm -hmm. And one of those ways, yes, we have a lot of tools today that we didn't have in years gone by or past generations because of the internet. But the reality of it is those big deals, we hear people talk about six and seven plus figure deals. Those big deals aren't done on Craigslist or by putting a Facebook Facebook ad out. They're done nose to nose and toes to nose. They're done over a cup of coffee, a great dinner, a fantastic glass of wine. And when you start to understand that strong, high-powered, high-trust relationships are what business is built on, that's the reality of getting to a place where you achieve the freedom you'd want, desire, and ultimately deserve. Mm. And that's what, we, that's what we talk about at length is how do you do that? If you start to understand that, you know, you can build a hundred million dollar year company if you really want to, but you can't do it doing the same things you are when you have a nine to five job. Mm. Yeah, absolutely true. Wow. Now, segueing into this, this was a great segue into the next question. I'm curious to know, at your very 
lowest? How, what was your mindset? How did you wrap your head around becoming who you are today? Oh, let's be clear. I was in the middle of a pity party. So like, you know, like <laughs> I'm certainly not, not different from anyone else. I don't think, um, I very distinctly remember. I, uh, I thought I had life by the tail. I was married. I had a good job. I had acquired, I don't know, 20 or 22 rental properties. And inside of about three months, between January and the end of March, I went from that to basically bankrupt. I definitely was homeless. Um, and I had a car that the finance company owned. But um, yeah, and a couple changes of clothes. And I remember driving past the Greyhound bus depot. And it was like somebody took a two by four in and, and uh, smacked me upside the head. And I had this, this epiphany that I had no home to go to. I didn't have a job. I didn't, I didn't have anything. And I knew at that point in time that something had to change. I didn't know how or what, but I started doing some research. And that's when I came across um, Bob Proctor. And uh, that's kind of the beginning of where this all started. And of course, this is many years ago before, you know, the movie, The Secret, and all that kind of stuff came out. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so you really took life by the horns and you, is that the saying, life by the horns? You took the life... <laughs> You took the bull by the horns and you just decided I'm going to arm myself with knowledge. I'm going to arm myself with knowledge. Yeah, you know, it wasn't that easy. I grew up in a very traditional, um, you know, European style home where the name of the game was always scarcity uh, and lack. Even if there was a little bit of money, you know, you know, I remember before my dad passed, you know, going and visiting him in BC and sitting down and saying, hey, how are things going, dad? You know, his answer was, oh, you know, his shoulders would fall. He would say even body language. Oh, Sean, things are so tough it's 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 a rough go and that's how i grew up mm -hmm. so you know going to hear bob for a weekend at fifteen hundred dollars for the weekend was not something i was prepared to do because my paradigm said you don't go and spend money on something that doesn't give you an instantaneous return you don't go buy new shoes until there's holes in the soles of your existing ones you don't go buy a new car until that car you've driven into the ground uh, you know that's how i grew up so, I mean, no, it wasn't quite that fast. Uh, you know, I had to wrap my head around it, but I did do it. No question about it. Hearing that language for the very first time is a little bit weird, right? Like it's a little bit off-putting when you're not used to, I grew up similar to you. I ne I wore the same shoes forever mm -hmm. until they were falling off of my feet, right? So I grew up with that same scarcity mindset. When I first started dipping into the world of Bob Proctor and Jack Canfield and Tony Robbins, all of a sudden everything started to shift the way I saw myself in the world started to change, but I remember the language took me back a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you know, at that point in time, you know, I had, and well, so I'll share the story. This is kind of an interesting one. If there's anyone listening to this right now and they're debating whether or not to make an investment in themselves, and to be very clear, when you invest, the expectation is always a return on the investment. The best investment you can ever make is in yourself. Um, I went to that event and Bob was finished speaking on the Friday evening. I went into the, into the ballroom. He was standing at the front of the ballroom, packing his briefcase up. And his staff was chasing me because I didn't have a name badge on. And I just walked into the ballroom. And I went up to Bob and I said, Bob, I want to have a conversation with you about you coaching me. And Bob is one of the most incredible speakers in the world. In person, he's one of the most direct, blunt people there is. And he looked at me and he said, Sean, good to meet you. And he pointed to the restaurant in the hotel. He said, that restaurant tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., don't be late. And he walked away and left me standing in front of the ballroom. And <laughs> wow. <laughs> we, we met. I was at the restaurant the following morning at 7 a.m. He walked in, ordered his dry toast and eggs. And this is really where I think the transformation started. He looked at me and he said, Sean, now remember where, how I grew up. You know, you didn't talk about money. It was taboo. Um, you know, money was always that, that thing that eluded us. It was... You know, and so scarcity, lack. And Bob looked at me and said, Sean, what's the most amount of money you've ever earned in a year? And I looked at Bob Proctor and I said, who the hell do you think you are? And Bob smiled. He looked at me and said, Sean, it doesn't really matter. But it tells me how you see yourself and how you value yourself. And I went, oh, well, put on the brakes here. What? How come I, I'm, I'm a grown man? No one's ever talked to me or told me that kind of stuff before. And, you know, we talked for another, oh, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes. And he went on to say, he says, it doesn't matter. I've probably earned more money than you. I went, okay, good point. And, you know, at some point in time, that my, you know, my head's going 600 miles an hour. At some point in that conversation, he, uh, he looks at me and he says, uh, 
uh, you know, are you still interested in coaching with me? And I say, yes, do you have a business card? And he says, no, he wrote his assistant's name and phone number down on a scrap of paper, and passed it across the table to me. We talked for another few minutes and he said, Sean, he said, you never did ask how much the investment is to work with me. And I said, no. And finally he says, okay, you know, it's, it's 7.35 or 7.40. I have to get back to the ballroom and prepare for, for the day. And uh, he stood up, I stood up, shook his hand and I sat back down. And as he's walking away from the table, he turns his head and throws over his shoulder. Oh, by the way, Sean, it's $90,000 to work with me for six months. <sighs> and Tanya, I, I'm telling you, I had to, I think, go home and change my shorts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So what happened after that? I, I saw, I think I paid the bill and I went and sat in my car. In those days, cell phones weren't quite as whizzy as they are today. And I dialed his assistant's phone number and I sat there with my finger over that send button for, I don't know, 35, 45 minutes mm -hmm. because I knew when I pressed the button, I was making a commitment and it was Saturday morning. I was quite sure she wasn't going to answer. And eventually it took me a while. I did hit that button and I did uh, commit to it. And you know, we did the paperwork on the Monday and the reality of it is, uh, people say to me sometimes, and I want you to think about this for just a minute, I think this is really important for those of you listening today, until you've made the decision to do something, a conversation about money or what the investment is, is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about money until you've decided to do something. Because once you've decided to do something and you start the, taking that first step, you see most people stop before they start. Mm -hmm. They have a great idea and they talk about it, but never get, a, get up out of the easy chair. If you've made a decision, you're going to do something, the money will come. If you want to work with me or anyone else who's a rock star out there who's going to make things happen for you and work with you, change your life, you need to make a decision first and then the money will take care of itself. I'm not saying you should do something crazy. I'm not saying you should go to the casino and put all your money in red or black. But as Bob Proctor said in the past, jump off the building and grow wings on the way down. <sighs> Wow, this is an incredible story. That's absolutely amazing. And then the rest is history. Well, it looks to be very clear. I mean, life is always full of interesting twists and turns. And, you know, there are always learning experiences. But, you know, I think we talked about this before, uh, before we went on air. Whatever has happened in my life, whether it's building a business or whether it's failing and, you know, a face plant and road rash to go along with it in business, whether it's divorce, whatever those things are, have made me into the person that I am today. And I have zero regrets. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of look at the, you have to look at the bad and the good as the same. You know, you have to appreciate both for, for the various different reasons that are happening in your life, but they have to be on the same level, I think, because there's, there's a lesson in both and they're always meant to happen at the exact time that they're happening, I, I feel like. Well, the good wouldn't be what it is if the bad wasn't there. That's true. How would you ever know what's great if you didn't go through some bad things? Absolutely. Hmm. Now you wrote a best-selling book called change your mind, change your results. What is your biggest message um, behind your words of this book? Uh, I think there are a few, you know, uh, a lot of people want something more than they have in life. And I subscribe to a couple different areas. One, you need to have a plan and you need to start. Most people don't. Most people will sit with a sofa seat belt on and wait for it to fall from the sky. And I think it's important to note that those people that do succeed are the ones that just go out and do it. Um, yes, they have a plan. Yes, they have a coach, but they go out and do it and they take the risk. You can never avoid risk. You can only manage risk. So you, you need to do something different, dramatically different. Suspend disbelief and go after it. The other side is, um, you know, as Zig Ziglar said, you know, if you help enough other people get what they want, you'll get what you want. Um, I think it's a key. Life becomes uh, much more rewarding when you start focusing on serving others instead of the almighty dollar money comes. Mm. And I'm a testament to that. Uh, my sole focus is yes, I run a business and yes, we run it as a business, but our business is helping other people achieve what they want. Mm -hmm. And if you're willing to do whatever it takes, I have one question. Bob Proctor had one when I started working with him, he said, I have one condition besides uh, getting paid, Sean. I said, what's that? He says, you can't argue with me. And for me, that's probably the biggest challenge. I don't go quite that far. What I say to people is, are you willing to do anything and everything it takes to get where you want, want to go, providing it's legal, moral, and ethical? And I think that's a key. If you're willing to do whatever it takes to get where you want to go, you'll get there. Most mm. people are not prepared. They're not willing. What, what do you think is the hardest of the three? Starting. That's it. Starting. Right? That's, that's the key. Most people they are comfortable. And so they get up out of the easy chair and they have a fantastic idea and they've talked about it and strategized about it and maybe even written it down. 
and they come up to what we call the terror barrier. That thing that looks like it's impenetrable, something you can't get over through or around. Reality, it's non-existent. It's a mirage. And on the other side of it is freedom. But we see this, and I say we as a general term, and we go, well, there's no way. It's absolutely impossible. I don't know. And it's that word that everyone that trips most people up, I don't know how. And they turn around and go right back to the easy chair and stay there in perpetuity. And then they hit 60 and 70 and 80 years old and go, oh, man, I wish I would have done X when I was younger. Wow. Isn't that the truth? Hey? And then I think when we look back, even when you look back now on 20 years ago, you're thinking, oh, my gosh, why was I so afraid? of this or that or the other thing, because now you have this collective wisdom. So I think there's something really to be said for stepping into the person you want to become, even if you don't feel ready, just do the steps and do the things that it actually requires of you, because it's the only way you're going to become who you're meant to be now. Listen, you're bang on. And every single one of us, I don't care who you are, what your background is, who your parents were or weren't, what religion, what race, what country it is not relevant. Here's what's relevant. Every single person was born uh, with a gift. They are a genius in something. You may not know what that is yet because you may not have actually gone and looked for it. You see, we were all pushed through that little eye, that little keyhole in school that said, you're going to graduate. Maybe you're going to college, university. You're going to get a job. You're going to work for 30 or 40 years. And then you're going to hope and pray that there's some money left over and you can live out the rest of your years. The reality of it is most people that retire are gone within a very short period of time. And we live in it today in, in an age when retirement is not really what it was intended to be, you know, in the industrial revolution. For me, it's about working when I want to and not because I have to. And I think that's how we need to be looking at this. Mm. Uh, your life should, should not cease being productive because you hit age 60 or 65 or whatever that is. And I, I think that's a key. If you are focused on how you can serve and support others, you will always be productive, whatever that looks like. Absolutely. You want to know one of the saving graces for me in my life that actually made this massive perspective shift for me was I was talking with a coach. I've, I always have a coach for everything I do. I was talking with one of my coaches to do with business. And when I was trying to figure out exactly what path I was going to go on, she said to me, I'd like you to do something. I would really, really love for you to look at your life and your circumstances and your situations that you've been through as the universe giving you this master's degree in adversity. What if you looked at it like that instead of looking at it like this stuff keeps happening to me and this might be why, you know, I think that was a, that was a barrier for me. I was afraid to pursue something because I thought it's just going to, the rug's going to be pulled out from underneath me at some point because this is just what I was used to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have a master's degree. (laughs) I have a master's degree in adversity and that empowered me like nobody's business. Well, and let's be very clear. Uh, Each one of those experiences that you encountered that may you have may perceived as as you know a challenge remember it's a perception Mm -hmm. and it isn't necessarily what we perceive perception is not reality no so it is an experience and no matter what you believe whether you believe in the universe or you believe in god or whatever your belief system is at the end of the day uh, life is about learning the moment you stop learning it's all over So life's about learning. How would you learn if you didn't have those experiences? It Mm -hmm. is your tuition. Because once you've experienced it, and if it was what you might consider a mistake, chances are you're never going to go back and do it again. Wow, I love that. Your experiences are your tuition. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow, I think that's fantastic. Now, let me ask you this last question. I'm curious to know, if you were to give because you're so, I think you're so good at this stuff. So if you're to give a step-by-step action plan, what would you say you need to do to build a solid foundation? Listen, at the end of the day, we've heard for many, many years, we need to go take action. And while that is true at some level, it is not always that easy. I can go stand in the middle of Deerfoot Trail or any freeway, the 401, doesn't really matter. And I can flap my arms like a bird flaps its wings. I've taken action. What am I going to accomplish? Not very much of anything other than maybe getting hit by a car. So (laughs) the reality of this is, yes, we need to take action, but we need to do it with uh, the idea of what's behind that. So we, when I work with people, very simply, we figure out what is the destination, where are we going, what are we going to achieve big picture? And then we take that and we build a plan. And the plan is very detailed, right down to when we're going to do the activities. So we take a calendar and time block it. So we know we reverse engineer that objective. So we know what has to happen every year 
every month, every week, every day. And sometimes for those of us like myself, they're every hour. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, that means your activity is based upon something that's moving you in the direction of goal or objective. Most people today spend over half of their days doing something that's non-productive to them. If you are, and for every single person listening right now, please stop. (laughs) Only focus on those things that are moving you where you want to go. Stop procrastinating. You're never going to be perfect. Perfection is just another key in the toolbox of procrastination. It doesn't exist. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfectionism, I found for me when I, when I got my head around that, because I would have defined myself that way years and years and years ago, mm-hmm. um, was just really me not fully believing in myself and my abilities. 100%. Yeah. I think most people are there too. Suspend disbelief. Wow. I, I love your analogy of flapping your arms. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely true without the right kind of action. So what I heard you say, just to summarize, you were saying, come up with your goal give yourself a time limit, then work backwards, decide what needs to be done, and then split it up into the months, split it up into the weeks, and then split it up into the days. And the final thing, and this doesn't have to be me, but at the end of the day, you need to have at least one coach. As you said, Tanya, a few minutes ago, everybody needs one. If you look at anyone that is truly successful, they've had a coach and likely more than one. I mean, there are times where I have three and four coaches, but I think that's what really is important. I start to understand you're never going to hit the level of success that it was intended you hit by yourself. You can't do it alone. You can't. I know. I've learned that firsthand. Like I thought I had enough to get started with everything, but I don't. I have a business coach. I have a speaking coach now. I have another coach teaching me how to put together my courses. Like you just said, I've got three going. <laughs> I've got three going at one time, which is, is what I need. You know, I'm accountable to all of these people, which is fantastic. So let's wrap this up. You have a free gift for everybody. Can we talk about that? I do. You mentioned a little bit earlier on uh, in our conversation that I wrote uh, a book. So I've got two more coming out this year, but change your mind, change your results. You can go and get it on Amazon or wherever you want. However, if you do this, if you go to freebookfromshawn.com and Sean is S-H-A-W-N, so freebookfromshawn.com, um, I will send you a free copy of the book. You'll fill oh. in the form and we'll, uh, we'll send you a book. That's amazing. I'm by, I'm going to go get it. (laughs) I want to read that book. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. I want to say thank you so much. You've just gone over and above for me today. And for everybody listening, I'm sure they're going to learn a ton from you. I think you're absolutely fantastic. So thanks for being here. Very kind. Thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. And thank you to everybody who's listening. You're listening to Thriving After Divorce Radio. I am your host, Tanya Marie Dubay, and we will catch you next time. Bye. Thank you again so, so, so much for joining us on the Thriving After Divorce radio podcast. We're coming to you every Monday morning so that you can start your week with intention and some powerful advice for what you're dealing with. So please subscribe to this podcast and share it with your friends and your family. My goal is to help change 1 million lives with this work because when you teach a woman, you teach an entire community. Everybody benefits and the love spreads. So please feel free to comment, review, share, and like with your help. I know I can reach this goal. So have a beautiful day and we will see you next week.